What's up, gang? This is the first intro that we've ever done on Leave Feeling Better because we sat down without an objective to talk about anything. And I just want to let you people know that it gets very weird and it gets very deep and it's going to make you question a lot of things. But in the end, it's all going to be worth it. So if this jumps in at a weird random point, just know that it's all going to be okay. Stick along for the ride. What do you guys think? I just want to let you know that this is our natural state. So look forward to it. <laughs> hey. It got weird and enjoy. Uh -huh. Man, I love you guys. This was great. This was a great podcast. Absolutely. Love you guys. Love it. Love it. All right. See you next love week. Love it. Hey, have a yeah. good weekend, boys. Bye. Bye. Shit. What is going on in this world, man? Like what is happening here yeah you're like oh yeah i'm doing a human thing like you kind of forget and you're like oh my god i'm being a human <laughs> dude isn't that such a beautiful experience like the human experience like i was realizing the other day like i think i told you guys like the deeper you go spiritually the more you realize that all we got is the human experience you know, like you got to enjoy every part of the human experience, like to its fullest. And that's that's such a paradox, right? Like the deeper spirituality you go, the the more you got to enjoy the human experience, because I don't know, I feel like I was at one point of my life where I was like, fuck the human experience. I am spiritual, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> like, but then like true spirituality is like loving the human experience it's like touching snow it's like watching netflix and enjoying it you know like you have ears and eyes and like feelings that you can sense while you're watching a television you know it's crazy mm -hmm. you want to be involved with life not attached to it it's kind of like the ram Dass thing it's like take the curriculum but don't pretend it's all that there is like do life yeah yeah, man, fucking live that human experience. Live it. I love it. Wolfgang, how you doing? I'm happy that I didn't have to do nothing to turn this into the woo-woo episode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You just got to provide. Sometimes the, all the guru does is provide space. <laughs> That's, <laughs> that's all there needs to be um, a little muji action yeah a little muji um everything good in your neck of the woods of gang yeah yeah nice for now if i woke Dude. up today like shit damn boys it really is another day <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> dude yeah, have you guys ever recognized? And I'm sure Ofgang, um, you you really enjoyed the dopamine kind of alley as well. I, I'm realizing recently that my days, like the balance of my days, are consistent with the balance of my dopamine, like especially in the morning. Like, dude, if I wake up and I go to like a nicotine pouch, caffeine, listen to a podcast, like I, or like eat some chocolate, some dark chocolate. Like I realize I'm so hyper stimulated that throughout the rest of the day, I'm trying to like achieve more and stimulate more and more and more uh -huh. rather than like, if I can slowly like enjoy the dopamine surges, like throughout the day, rather than just all at once then I notice I have a lot more balanced days. Does that make sense? It does. Especially in the morning. Like it, but the thing is, every morning I wake up and I want to like just fucking stimulate, you know what I mean? Like I want to go watch TV. I want to do all these things. But I have to like force myself every morning to do 15 minutes of mo mobility. And that brings me right down. But it sucks getting myself to do that every time. It's like a, a parent getting a little kid to be like, all right, it's time to stretch for 15 minutes. It's like, no, mom, fuck you. you know? <laughs> Dude, that's the internal dialogue that I have. 
Well, that's because, uh, well, not the only one reason, but one reason that that exists that, that I've noticed, uh, is it's all, I mean, brains only can create logic from comparison. So when you wake up, like say, if you, if you ran hot water on your hand, if it's scolding hot, then everything else is going to feel less hot. You know, if you come, if you crank the hottest water immediately for the rest of the day, you've got this relative heat where, you know, in the same way, like if you immediately eat the sweetest thing ever for the rest of the day, everything is less sweet than that. And that's like (laughs) the the beauty of the hard reset of sleep is that you kind of get this fresh palate. I mean, you can sure as hell be on a bender where for weeks you're just like eating tons of sweets and it does accumulate. But like when you wake up, uh, it, it, and there's, there's something about, you know, you fasted in the past. If you intermittent fast and you don't eat until noon, then you start with like a berry. You're like, Oh, that's real sweet. Yeah. Cause I haven't had any, anything today, <laughs> you know, for there's sure. something about drinking water, you know, having, yeah. that, that missing out on that stimulation. Oh man. I had some lucky charms the other day. It was a couple of weeks ago now, dude, I took a spoonful of it and I was like, Dude, every sense like went off in my body that I hit the jackpot. I was like, holy shit, man. Like, this is better than anything that I've ever tried in the past. Like back in the back in my college days of doing drugs, like me with that spoonful of like lucky charms was like, holy shit, man, this is like sensory overload. <laughs> Yo to enjoy it though like talk about that you can have you can eat all the lucky charms you want if you're enjoying them oh dude dude dude, i ate the whole box and i enjoyed every bite of it it was so fucking good (laughs) so good but the thing is like the rest of the day i was craving like anything that was sugary and everything like that and nothing else tasted good you know like i try to eat vegetables and i'm like these taste like shit now, you know, like I, I can only imagine like our children of the United States, like waking up and eating these things every day. No wonder they don't want to eat fucking vegetables, you know, (laughs) dude, I wouldn't either. And, and it took me a lot. Like, like, obviously, like you said, Chase, I slept that night, woke up the next morning and I, I wanted to eat vegetables, but throughout the rest of the day, by starting the day out with lucky charms, Fuck that. I didn't want to, like, dude, I just wanted to keep eating Lucky Charms. Are Lucky Charms cereals? Yeah, it's just a sugary cereal. It has, like, 30, 30 grams of added sugar per cup of, like, Lucky Charms. <laughs> and you ate a box. So, so dude, I probably had, like, 120 <laughs> added, like, sugars, but I can promise you that I fucking enjoyed every bite of it. <laughs> lucky, <laughs> lucky Charms is sugary cereal with a bunch of marshmallows sprinkled in. So yeah. it's like, oh boy, it's brutal. Yeah. yeah. I remember who said that, but uh, start every day with eating a frog and all of your days are going to be great or something like that. Dude, that's yeah. actually got a lot of truth to it. Some author or something. I don't remember who said that. Yeah. It gets attributed to Mark Twain a lot, but then there's debate about it. And, oh, you know, yeah, that makes sense. Well, fuck, I noticed it when I start yeah, my days out with like a bad tasting protein shake, like bone broth. I'll put brown, like bone broth in it and stuff has a lot of protein, but it does not taste great, but it makes me feel good. And I notice on those days, like I am so much more balanced if I start out my day with eating something that isn't so great for the taste, but more for my energy. Yeah. But fuck, if you start out your day with something, something super tasty and filled with sugar. I've Watch done both out. while uh, while fasting for sure. I've had days when I started just eating candy first thing, breaking my fast with fucking candy. And then I was like, well, might as well skip this day because I'm just going to feel like shit for the rest of it. Might as well go back to bed because <laughs> I'm just going <laughs> to yeah. crash the whole time. Uh, yeah. And then the best breakfast I've ever had in that time uh, was broth with like chicken like a little chicken soup made in like like that morning mm. yeah that nice just and warm. felt incredible on my body and that's the thing you got to think with the the whole of your body not just your tongue right. you got to chant the mantra with your entire body not just your tongue oh <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah well, th- that's it man um breaking a fast with bone broth i love that because you even the smell like if you if you've yeah. kind of been 
in work mode for a bit and then like you're kind of getting hungry and you just you heat up that bone broth you're like oh i really smell this you feel the heat you know mm. you almost yeah you almost hear it simmering if you're you know depending on how you're heating it up it's like that's a ritual right there dude the first slurp you just feel it go down into your gut mm. yeah and your body absorbs a lot more like absorbs uh when you break a fast, is it true that your body absorbs whatever you feed it then, like a lot more than regular meals throughout the day? In a way, Which... it absorbs things. I tend to believe, and Mitchie, you might you might have a different opinion here, um, but I be- I come to believe that it uh, digests or like absorbs nutrients faster. Hmm. Um, Which but... would make sense why brown bond broth would be good because of the collagen. Yeah, right? so it's kind of like there's this curve of nutrient absorption. And there's different ways to manipulate it, but kind of no matter what your body absorbs, what it's going to absorb, whether the curve is like this or the curve is like this. Right. You know, it's just like, and and that's where people get into the issues with like blood sugar spikes or like low or high glycemic foods, because your body's going to absorb a shit ton of carbohydrates real fast and create a bunch of blood sugar. If you absorb it like this. But if yeah. you absorb it, uh, if you have a slow digesting carb, it's going to be more like, and so is, and in re- Which response, the blood sugar is going to be burp, 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 too. Definitely does make a difference on how you're going to feel. Yeah. Like, oh, for you're sure, gonna, man. You're going to fucking, it's going to suck to have that spike in the morning. That's like, I that's just said how I did. That, like issue. what you're talking about, Wolfgang, is probably the number one thing that I focus on for my days um, besides the dopamine. Th- well, this, this goes into the dopamine thing is like, um not like not starting my day out with a blood sugar spike with like carbohydrates and obviously like through science they've proven that starting your day out with a high protein high fat meal is much better because Mm -hmm. you're not gonna start yourself off on this roller coaster of blood sugar spike crash craving blood sugar spike because we gave into the craving crash craving and it's just a fucking roller coaster Plus, isn't isn't starting your day with the with the spike like that basically just asking for diabetes? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's there's there's the the issue of causation and correlation where a lot of people like to look at blood sugar variation data and say mm. that, that causes obesity, say that that causes diabetes, say that that shortens your lifespan. When in reality, like you can kind of get away with foods that spike blood sugar whenever, but the causing that disturbance in the force causes you to in the long run, consume a lot more calories and become obese because of the, the reaction to the blood sugar spike. Like it's not blood sugar spikes that are doing anything. It's how you respond to the crash after the blood sugar spike, which is usually just a, it's usually just, a spike feeling like shit, another spike feeling like shit, which basically means a pop tart feeling like shit, a bowl of cereal feeling like shit. Yeah, uh, you know what saying. I mean? That's, yeah. that's what causes diabetes and obesity and shortens lifespans. Progressive yeah. overload on that sugar. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I love that old thing brings up progressive overload every every episode now that has <laughs> nothing to do with weight training. It was last week. It was the reading of the books of progressive yeah. overload. Yeah, prog- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he brings up progressive overload more than I do. <laughs> I really love, it. I love it, it. It applies to everything. Oh, it's great. It's great. Well, it's- it's like I said the other day, Chase, it's like you share your wisdom with us and then we, we will share your wisdom back with you when, <laughs> I, when, I, when you need it. <laughs> yeah, man. Yo, Mitch, when you hit me with that, uh, what, did I, what did I tell you about the fucking yeah, positive so, personality? Uh, yeah, so I don't have my phone on me. I left it at a client's house yesterday, so I'm on my iPad. But basically, nice. Ofgang, I remember when Chase said, something about when I asked him about if he experiences negative energy, how you don't take that on and how you can let it just be in the group chat. And Chase said something about, all right, do you have it, Chase? Or do you have that? Was it when he talked about the just say yes thing? Yes, exactly. It's just say yes. And so I texted him the other day because I I took a screenshot of it because it was so deep and it hit me so deep that I took a screenshot of it. I've been looking at it like probably once a day just to remind myself. 
And so I sent Chase a text the other day, probably like a week ago. And I'm like, Hey man, I just want to let you know, like, I've been looking at this every day for like a week and it's been super powerful. And then what happened, Chase? Oh yeah. I was just in a situation in my life that I don't want to publicize, but, um, I was like dealing with somebody important to me who just thrives in a, in a much different environment who like, you know, I just got done talking to them and I was sitting in my head thinking, what are my next steps to mend this situation? What am I going to do? How am I going to lift this person up? And then you just sent me uh, a message that I told you, which was just say yes to what is. Sometimes you don't need to change their energy. Sometimes you just need to accept it and accept yours. And I was like, and just say it. yes, just say yes. So I just said yes. And I didn't do anything. And guess what? We're doing way better. <laughs> that's so cool yeah okay. yeah man there's a there's a there's a passivity that's wisdom wisdom is knowing what not to do wisdom like you said Wolfgang, is um you know i love when you mentioned destructive creation because that is what wisdom is it's it's pulling away all that action that you don't need to do trimming the fat trimming the fat Some, I, i've never seen someone wise who doesn't get to the point or to say that in a way that's not fucking double, triple, quadruple negative. Uh, all the wise people that I've ever seen talk or talked to or whatever always just get straight to the point. They don't like yeah, really bullshit it. They're just like, yeah, here you go. What's the saying, Chase? I would have wrote you a, a long, or no, I would have wrote you a short letter, but I didn't have it? time. Yeah, but I didn't have time. Yeah, yeah. It's like, sorry for the long letter. I didn't have time to write you a short one. Yeah, that's such a good one. It's so real. Where is that from? Uh, dude, that's just, I think that's just a saying. I think that's I just... was interviewing Chase on my podcast and he said that. I was like, man, that's fucking good. Yeah, man. I just acquire. So so my system of, of you know, content consumption, I just, in my journal, anytime I hear a great quote, I just write it down but I don't always attribute it. So now I have like all of this great wisdom from all these different books that I've written down and I, I look at often. And then I, it's just, I wish I could attribute this stuff. <laughs> Dude, you do though. You do. It's in the memory bank and you bring it out at the perfect time. It's like you are like an encyclopedia of, of inspirational quotes and I love it. And not just inspirational, of wisdom, you know? <sighs> yeah, I, the thing is, I didn't, uh, I didn't go into the forest to get the wisdom, right? Like I just, uh, I'm just, uh, the middleman passing the wisdom from source to source, which I think everyone is anyway. Like nobody created anything original and Ofgang's in the freaking dark. <laughs> Dude, he's been in the dark. <laughs> Welcome to the dark side. <laughs> I was looking at my, uh, at my collection of quotes and I think we should do a, a Patreon episode on that for sure. Reading oh, some good of quotes. Those. My hall yeah. of, of fame of quotes I found and That's happened sweet. in my life from me or other people. <laughs> I'll give you sweet. one. I'll give you just one to tease it. Uh, sure. Let's see. What's like one of the latest ones? A progressive overload. <laughs> yes, yes. That's the quote. <laughs> All right, That's it. <laughs> uh... There it is. Camouflage. I'm like a dinner table. What? <laughs> Which is something a friend said. <laughs> Camouflage. I'm like a dinner table. <laughs> what is that? The best mean? part of it, they and it's up to you to decide. They don't have context attributed to them. They just sound good in the moment. And I'm just like, yep, writing that down. It's like a baby, it's like a baby who put a bunch of food on them. And now he's camouflaged and looks like a dinner table because he has just a bunch of assortment of foods on him. <laughs> he's just full of fruity pebbles or whatever it was. Yeah, man. He just <laughs> looks like a dinner table. He's camouflaged. Man, that's great. Is this episode just us getting weird? Because I'm like, you yes. mentioned Patreon and I'm like, I don't even know where we make the cutoff for Patreon at this point. Like, is this just a weird episode? <laughs> this is just, I'm just, cool with that. Just episode. All Talk right. about whatever. Yeah. I don't know. 
Yeah, yeah, and we could talk about what's been happening in our own personal lives too, because I feel like we don't get a chance. Like, I don't like. I want to find out about what Chase has been doing with his. Uh, dude, I want to say interior designing every time, but uh, <laughs> instructional design and Oathking. I want to find out how everything's going with you, um, with the video games and everything like that. Yeah, let's just let's just provide. Um, let's not provide anything. Let's just freaking chat this is a this is just making it weird sounds good oh man i can't say making it weird i've been listening to a podcast about making it weird um, who is so, it j is it j jp sears have you been talking about that no no i've actually uh pete holmes has a podcast called you made it weird <laughs> that sounds fun <laughs> yeah it's, Who's that? it's really good man it's a uh, pete holmes he's a comedian so he has other comedians and actually really spiritual people on because he was he grew up uh, Christian and then like lost his faith, got a divorce, all this bad stuff <laughs> happened to him. And then he kind of found spirituality and now he has and found spirituality and became a comedian along the way. So now he he talks to other comedians and actors and just famous people. But then he gets real secular and like ask people, what do you think the meaning of life is and what do you believe in a higher power and how does this all work, dude? It's it's great. Dude, let's talk about it. Let's go on the podcast. I would like to. We gotta gotta do some convincing, or just like run into him somewhere at like a at like a grocery store. <laughs> <laughs> you have this all planned out. Yeah, yeah. I've been, I've been following him around to Whole Foods. <laughs> Camouflage is a dinner table. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Uh, it's cool man i actually like to my surprise he started talking about the enneagram the other day too and i'm like all right i'm not alone here dude it's pretty popular huh like i was walking into a coffee shop the other day and i have two kind of like good friends that work there but i only know them from there and i have the enneagram book and i put it down on the table they're like oh what's your type like and i was like man this is crazy like everyone's all about it yeah i guess so i mean i think it I think it is something that can, you know, come and go and kind of like, unfortunately gets lumped into that astrology side of, of things, which I mean, astrology is cool, but um, yeah, I feel like the Enneagram comes and goes like it, it, it comes up in popularity and then kind of goes away, but I'm glad people know about it. Yeah. Well, I liked how we talked in the Patreon group too about how you made uh, everyone in your family was it at Christmas time take the Enneagram test and so everyone like compared with each other. Dude, that was my parents doing. So like I've been freaking out about the Enneagram and then they like I wasn't even there for this. So it was just a holiday party that I didn't even go to. And they had everyone in the family take the test and they made like a little chart. Um, and I have a huge family, so it's a very full chart and it's just cool to see where everyone lies on like their base instinct. And, you know, a lot of people aren't going to crack the egg and do the deep dive and really do spiritual work with it. But like, just to know where a lot of people are falling is, is cool. Is this test like long? No, but I also, if Wolfgang and Mitchie, like the way that you two are, I would much rather you guys learn about it to find your type. I would too, because yeah. the test sounds boring. Yeah, I took the test, like the <laughs> yeah. one that you sent, Chase, the, the quick one that one time. And I took it and I was I, I think it said type nine or something like that. But then when I was doing the deeper dive in the book that I'm reading, I was a more in-depth test. It took a lot longer. And I would I noticed I was definitely way more a type seven. Mm -hmm. And so yeah, like if someone's really serious about taking the test, like make sure that you devote a little bit of time to it. Cause like the the quick one would have had me at a as a type nine. But um yeah, I definitely vibed with more of the seven when I took the other one. Well, yeah, I mean typing yourself, you can't do it based on actions. You can only do it based on instincts, feelings, motivations, and fears. So like you can look at your a history of your actions and and be entirely unable to type them because you could act entirely like a two, right? Like a two being the helpful person. You could spend so much time helping people, but you know, your it could be your job, it could be your position in life. And then at your core, what you're really running towards and running away from can be a totally different thing. Talking about the inner values. The values. <laughs> values. 
we got to we should talk about values next week. Um, but I, I've been thinking a lot about values this week. We could almost set the stage because Hannah brought that up. I was like, that's a shout great out. Topic. Hannah Maud, one of our beautiful Patreon supporters said that we should talk about value values in one of our upcoming episodes. And we will. Yeah, man. I love it. Um, you guys are you guys familiar with the, uh, the subtle art of not giving a fuck Mark Manson? Only when yeah, you've told me and ago. someone else recommended it, it oh. to me, but I never got to read it. Oh, man. It's a uh, Mitchie. You said you read it, dude. I read it because one of my bosses uh, when I was working in Hawaii, when I was still doing the corporate thing at a luxury uh, ho- hotel brand, gave it to me. <laughs> and two weeks later, I put in my two weeks and started traveling the world. After <laughs> <it was up. laughs> That's one way to, to fire your people <laughs> just make them go chase the dreams. <laughs> yo shout out to books like you know sometimes <laughs> people give you books that will change your life and yeah. it changes your life in a way that might not be great for them <laughs> yeah. you know shout, like, out, I feel like- shout out to selflessness yeah yeah like someone's just like hey this wisdom is going to be good for you and you're like yeah this is good for me Bye. Bad for you. (laughs) See ya. This book taught me about my values, and you're not a part of them. (laughs) (laughs) That's so true. Shout out to Uh, Max. Yeah, man. I mean, that's the same thing you realize. Do you remember, like, in school when you realized that, like, oh, books are pretty cool? Like, like, uh, like I remember reading Fahrenheit 451 for the first time, and like, you know, Brave New World, and we were reading all this in high school, and I'm like are we supposed to be reading this? Like, this is epic. And also telling us, like, this almost contradicts education. Yep. I'm going to say that was probably just your teachers being cool. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I never realized books are cool in, in school. I hated books throughout school. Uh, I only realized that when I started, like, working on myself after I finished education. <laughs> Same, same. I didn't like books besides The Giver, man. The Giver was a good one when I was growing up. Um, and it just talked about dreams and stuff like that. And um, but yeah, I didn't start liking books until I got to choose the books that I wanted to read. Hmm, that's fair. And that was after school. Man, I just had a realization. Oh, that was, was a, that was that was a string of thoughts that I'm gonna try to recreate for you guys. Uh but basically i was thinking about poet like what did i like from books as a kid because i was surrounded by books i just basically never really read them i would look at them or whatever and i remember uh in school like we would do poetry or whatever because we had a lot of poets in romania in his throw history and you know all the teachers were like oh poetry is so cool and me as a kid was like yeah i guess poetry is so cool and then later on, when, when I got out of that environment, I was like, man, I don't give a shit about poetry. <laughs> and then I thought about, now I was thinking about how growing up throughout my life, I would often hear someone say something and I would just go with it. Like if somebody had an opinion, I'd be like, yeah. And then I would just hold that opinion until I would hear like a counter argument to it. Like, and this could be like months later hear a counter argument to that concept and i'd be like no yeah this is correct and then just go with that and i would just like be blown around so much conceptually um when this was like you know middle school so like i guess around 10 or something like that you know 7 to to 11 or something 7 years to 11 i think it's is middle school something like that i don't remember exactly um but that's interesting because then I also remember that I challenged so many beliefs growing up as well. And I was thinking about the paradox stuff that Mitch was talking about. Like, on the one hand, I would be like, oh, yeah, random concept I never heard of. I guess I'll just go with that and never like consider things on my own. But then on the other hand, I'd be like, if you don't explain this to me properly, I'm just going to not believe this or take this at all. And I don't know why, what differentiated that for me growing up. But yeah, that's just an interesting thought that just popped out that I'm going to definitely probably shadow work the fuck out of (laughs) in the coming days. 
And obviously now where I'm at in life, I no longer share either of those. I'm just like, yeah, I'll make my own decision. If something makes sense, uh, you know, I'll, I'll look into it and see what's up. If, if, uh, new information comes out, I'll look at the new information and just flow like water. Right. There's my, my little side rant. You're welcome. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Yeah. I like it. Hey man, I've been thinking about something. You just said flow like water. Yeah. I'm going to derail this conversation, but um, I mean, I already did. So go ahead. All right, let's do it. (laughs) So I've been thinking a lot about flowing like water too, but then I'm thinking about, you know, the human experience. So like if energy uh, exists and just, just flows, here's, here's where we might have a, have a role to play because water given the way that it it works with gravity and, and gravity being the thing that harnesses us to earth gravity being the thing that that keeps us glued to the planet that that you know makes us humans stuck to earth gravity sends water to the lowest point so being creatures of planet earth flowing with water following our instincts following gravity we may intuitively go to the lowest possible point so here comes purpose for humans to drive towards development, to manage the flow of water, to assist it in not going instinctively to the lowest point. Um, you know, like, like kind of how never taking action is kind of taking action. And, you know, the repercussions of never taking action may not work out in your favor, but then there is wisdom of knowing when to act and when not to act. And there's at the the root of this, there's this delicate balance of flowing like water, but not letting the water go to the lowest point. Flowing like water, but not drowning. Yeah. Swimming. I mean, swimming, riding waves, all that's there. Um, But it's just, it's just a thought experiment that's, that's been on my mind of like, how much flow can I go with? Cause we already talked about not taking action and I'm like, oh great, but I do need to take some action. Yeah, it's like the Bhagavad Gita or even the Tao, like Taoist philosophy say like the art of non-doing, right? Like the beautiful art of doing nothing, but doing it with intention. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Man, what you said, Chase, is like practically a new concept to me. So we, we have to explore this in the coming days, weeks throughout, like both in the podcast and just in our group chat. I feel like I need to have this explained like another three times <laughs> to like wrap my head around. So I'm excited about this. Also, Mitch, didn't the Bhagavad Gita also talk about something like you have the right to the action, but not to the rewards of it? For sure. It talks about a lot, but yeah, it talks a lot about action and inaction and how there's a diff, like basically the art of non-doing is huge in it as well. And um yeah, it's really powerful, man. Have you ever read that, Chase? No. Wow, that that is a very powerful book for sure. The Art of Non-Doing. Oh, yeah. I've only read The Art of Not Giving a Fuck. They sound uh, <laughs> pretty remarkably similar, but I'll... <laughs> one, well, it one just more sounds profound. similar to what you were saying of like knowing when to do things, but knowing when to not do things, you know? Like yeah. knowing when to just go with the flow, but also knowing when to do something um, that is still with the flow, but yeah, it's just that beautiful art of knowing when to do something and when not to do something. Cause I think many of us can find ourselves spinning our tires, or if we want to relate it to water, trying to paddle upstream and force ourselves up, up the stream when all we need to do is just let go and guide ourselves down the river. Always some motherfuckers trying to skate uphill. <laughs> always man and i catch myself in the middle of it without even realizing that i was doing it i'm like dude i've been paddling upstream for a week and a half and i didn't even realize it until i realized that i'm exhausted just turn around and stop oh, doing stuff man. and let the water take you i related that with stress so much in the past Beautiful. But i would just like go so hard and just be like I would go so hard the water would just wash over me and just knock me out. And of course, of course, this is all figuratively speaking for the listeners and just 
wake up and be like, what the fuck just happened? I guess I just learned the lesson to like relax and take a step back and don't take action as hard as you are trying to do. Uh, yeah, like I, I, I had to learn that lesson hardcore a few times for sure. Yeah. Have I ever told you guys the story of how I started being me, I guess? <laughs> Have I ever told you the story of my of uh, the spiritual journey? Okay, I thought it was like started. a birth story. I was like, how no, you no, started? No. okay. Um, no, okay. Well, everybody knows children come from stew. Like that's yeah. that's just known fact. Yeah, I thought it was. Uh, I thought it was birds. I thought storks came and dropped. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's storks. It's storks in the U.S., yeah. but it's uh, you guys in, uh, in Romania. You guys got to watch a movie called About a Boy. Uh, that's where that reference is from. It's so also they, a book. What do you do? You just like you follow a recipe and you make try to make some, you know, trying to make some stew, and then it's, out comes a little Stewart. I mean, the recipe for humans is just Stuart. <laughs> uh, dad, bringing the dad jokes, man. Stuart, action. Uh, I mean, the recipe for humans is just basically deviled eggs. Are you putting <laughs> the complex. paprika? Right, the paprika on top, or are we just keeping it the deviled egg? I uh, that's uh, the to the parents' discretion. Gotcha. <laughs> But you gotta have you gotta have some sort of cream and you gotta have some sort of eggs. Otherwise, you can't let's, make deviled eggs. Let's hear the story of King. You got me intrigued, man. So in high school, it's it's, it's, it's gonna be interesting to see what your thoughts are on this. Uh, in high school, I would just always sense where like someone's presence is. Like if we were walked in a group, like just you know coming from school or whatever, and it was like seven, eight of us, maybe even more. I would always know which person is where around me without having to look for them. Uh, and I all, and I was like, yeah, it's something that everybody can do, right? This is just humans feel each other's presence. This is something that everybody has. And then I noticed a colleague just like, even when it was just the two of us, sometimes I would move from his left to his right while we're walking and he would look after me and like turn around and then get scared. And I like sat for a second. I was like, hold on, you can't, you don't feel people around you? And he's like, no, what the fuck are you talking about? And I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> and then I just went around and just asked people if they feel the presence of people around them, like just people being next to them. And so many people said no. Like basically all of my colleagues that I asked said no. And I was like, huh and then the x-men theme song played in my head but that's another part uh, <laughs> and so i was like huh i have no idea what this is but it feels like an ability so i just basically done did started doing what chase is doing of just what meditating. being a dad no yeah being a dad <laughs> I just... got married, had a few kids, <laughs> embraced what my highly sensitive being was, and turned into a dad. Yep. Ask my felt, kids if, the... ask my the kids if they can feel the presence of people around them, and they said no, and then I fucking orphaned them and moved on with my life. Yep. Got rid of them. I said, "You're no child of mine, uh, <laughs> fucking losers." <laughs> um, <laughs> No, so I started, I started meditating and I started doing what at the time I called attuning myself to the universe. But I would just, just sit in stillness and presence and focus on these feelings that I now was aware of. Like I could kind of like separate and compartmentalize, I guess. But I don't know, just being aware of everything that was going on. And over time that like, that enhanced to being able to see and feel uh, it, it, it kind of, you know, what people would call, um, what's the thing where you can like see colors? Syn synesthesia, mm -hmm. right? Uh, it kind of developed into like emotional synesthesia where I started building this vocabulary of, of emotions. So like I can sense the emotions in a person via like taste, feeling, visualization, and it would be like this person. I feel a, a certain energy from this person. I don't know what it is. And then I would try to identify what it is and be like, okay, this is anger. 
added to the vocabulary. This is sadness. This is happiness. This is, I was basically learning another language of, it wasn't even body language anymore. It was energy language. Right. And this only improved like over the years. And it, it, it had to the point where like, I would, I would be able sometimes to just, I mean, I, I, I haven't lost this. I talk about it like it's in the past, uh, but at the time I, w- I would do stuff like sense someone's uh, emotions through just text chat, like accurately mm. and just like all kinds of stuff like that. Uh, and just, I guess that also like started developing my empathy a lot to the point where it became dangerous later on, as we have talked about in the past, um, when I was starting to like lose my own self because I was feeling everyone's, everyone else. So there was no self there to occupy my space. Um, so yeah, and that just eventually synchronicity started being a thing and I started, or maybe I started noticing it and just, and all of this made me think of the, uh, of the flow thing you, you guys talked about. And it's like, depends how you define flow, right? Because the highest state of flow quotation marks I've ever been in was when I felt so in tune with just existence itself, that things were just happening to me, like amazing things, like back to back to back all day long. Like, Oh, you're walking on the street. Here's a cool person. But I would, I would feel the, like the, the compelling, like I could like kind of feel existence being like, go talk to that person that literally is just in front of you right now. Just happened to be at the, at the crossing of the roads. And sometimes I would, go to talk to them sometimes i wouldn't when i did that would lead to other cool things happening yeah like, like throughout the day when i didn't it felt like i just abruptly ended the flow like i ripped myself out of the flow of, of existence and it would yes. feel like shit it would be like eating sugar it'd be like uh, when in the morning it'd just be like, like oh i feel like i just had an energetical crash after riding the energetical highway i guess uh and that's all i can think of right now what do you guys think I, I love the idea of that you kind of just mentioned at the end there of going with the flow in a way that is spawning a lot of action because here kind of marries a bunch of different concepts where, yeah, there's going with the flow and just sitting back and being taken by the tide. But then flow is also applied to like athletes who are in a game who are like, you know, just they're in they're in the flow state. Um, I remember the dude. Oh, what the, who the hell? I forget. Hardest author's name in the world. He wrote the book yeah. on flow. Yeah, yeah. What's his name? Uh, he uh, he wrote "Recapture the Rapture," right? Yeah, it's, um, it's yeah. A nice title. <laughs> it's it's a gone one, but but he talks about flow state where you know the we talked about this in the gamification episode too, where you can be in flow when the challenges match the skills, and yeah. it's just it's not too easy, not too hard. Yeah, yeah, and you're just kind of going about life in this kind of emotional mm. flow state. Um, but you know what's beautiful. You know what's also funny now that I think about it back uh, to what I said? Uh, those awesome things that kept happening that demanded uh, action from me mm-hmm. were things that I needed to work on. The universe was literally just throwing opportunities at me to develop my, my to, to release my trauma, to, re- to develop my weaker sides, to, to work on the things that I wanted to work on which makes the fact that I didn't take action sometimes even more depressing, but that's fine. It's part of the journey. You, you know, I have to lie to myself somehow, <laughs> mm-hmm. but in the moment I had to like learn to be like not crushed by it because otherwise I would just continue the, 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 the cycle, right? Like with food, it's like you just get back up. It's fine. It is what it is. You did your action. That's the benefit. Now get back on it. Mm. Dude, I vibe so much with everything that you said in that. Like that story is so powerful because I like what I took from it was I feel like that's the story of you recognizing your highly sensitive being, like being aware of these vibrations that not a lot of people are. And a highly sensitive person can either use it like really negatively like allowing like all those emotions to just come on as you and take over you and then you don't know how to deal with all these emotions because it's so new to you and it's so overpowering but then when you can realize that this is actually a superpower like being highly sensitive being able to walk into a room and feel how every person is feeling yep. um, is really powerful and a question that I have for you is there ever a time that you 
second guess yourself of being observing rather than judging like is there any times where you're like oh i'm observing this um but then you second guess guess yourself and you're like well well maybe i'm just judging these people um i would say no but in the sense of i was always open to clarification especially when i was building the vocabulary i was always open to evidence and like i would always kind of like I would never double down on something. I'd be like, okay, I think this might be this. And then I would kind of just give it a moment. And then that would prove itself in the person's yeah. behavior. So like my, the track record has been fucking impressive. I don't know if it's a hundred percent anymore because so many things happened that I, who the fuck keeps track anymore. But yeah. at, at the beginning, it was always a hundred percent. And it wasn't, I, I took very special care to not let that make me like overconfident or like, you know, put me in that space of like, ah, haha, I know everything. I always just try to yeah. take a step back and just be like, hold on, just observe and take notes and just figure this shit out because this is really like, I'm on my own here. I don't know anyone that ever talks about this stuff. So I got to figure this out on my own. So I can't afford to fuck it up. Yeah. This is a classic example, too, of you developing skills with kind of values in mind, like to bring it back <laughs> to values, right? Because just developing a skill, like Mitchie said, uh, self-work, uh, you know, self-development, productivity, like improving your skills, improving your productivity, none of this is inherently good because you could easily develop that skill to be a highly manipulative person who can see yeah. other people's energy and use it for evil. Um, you know, villains are actually great self uh you know they're great productivity geniuses they're great at motivating people they're great at all this stuff that we strive to achieve uh, but with values in mind you can become a hero not a villain it's funny you say that because i'm pretty sure the mainstream would absolutely classify me as a villain immediately <laughs> with like the way i speak and everything i do um man there was something more important i wanted to say though the highly sensitive part no, it was about the value stuff. It was in the middle of what Chase was saying, but then I thought of superheroes and just dropped that. Yeah, superheroes, they just bust through the wall and take over all your thoughts, man. <laughs> now I I'm hate just thinking about that, man. <laughs> no, I vibe so much with what you were saying, though, of King. Like, and, and I think you surrounded yourself with two highly sensitive people as well. I think um, so, yeah. So I think mm -hmm. that's why we vibe so much, because um, there was a time in my life while I was in college that I didn't know how to handle all these emotions of what I was experiencing from other people. So I just did a bunch of drugs and, and drowned it out in alcohol. And I realized that it wasn't ever going away. So I had to like slowly find out like why I was able to experience these things. And I'm sure Chase can, can feel this too. Like when I say it, like that's why I love being a personal trainer so much because you have so much effect on how someone's like their vibration, like the vibration that they enter the gym with. And then the vibe that they leave the gym with is like the most powerful way. Like, and I'm sure that's why yoga is so powerful. Like massages are so powerful because of the drastic transition you can have in someone's energy field from just an hour of working with them. And so that's what that's truly at the root of why I love personal training so much, because you can change someone's energy so fast by picking up like heavy things and lit and, and dropping them. And it's yeah. like, I don't know how this is possible, but I get to hang out with the most amazing people every day and see their transformation. And a lot of them like will tell me like, wow, I feel better. And it's like, yeah, you look better, man. Like you feel better. Like I can feel it. And mm. that's, that's why I do the personal training because it's so, it's so nice to like embrace my highly sensitive side and then help others like change that within them without them actually knowing. And, and, and some of them do know, but some, like some of them just are like, oh, it's like you after you get a massage, you're like, wow, I feel better, but you don't know. Like exactly the words to say it's like dude you just transferred like you just totally leveled up your energy field yeah yeah i mean absolutely dude humans like but you can prove this like humans are just 
a collection of molecules that decide to be in the shape of Mitchie for an extended period of time, kind of like ice being frozen into ice cubes. And it's just the ice cube while it's the ice cube. But then there are these experiences when you rub two ice cubes beside each other, molecules from the ice cubes, you know, it literally electron clouds are exchanging electrons. Energy is neither created nor destroyed. So if energy can potentially, which we don't know, can energy be colored in certain ways? Can energy have, I mean, if, if Wolfgang's saying that he can feel people's, people's energy, I'm wondering maybe calories, maybe energy, maybe this transfer of electrons has a color to it. And maybe we are able to transfer electrons to other people. Maybe we're able to, you know, exchange some molecules in the process in totally normal ways that, um, change the the course of someone's energetic path so to speak doesn't touch do something to that level to that extent that's cr that's crazy you say touch because like if if i go in normal public like if i go to the grocery store and touch someone especially in times like now they freak out right but me being a personal trainer and i have it like having my clients i'm secretly touching them all, almost a good amount of our training sessions. Mm -hmm. And that's a huge part though. Like I noticed that me touching them in these areas of where they should, should be feeling the muscle contraction and everything is so huge. Like it's so subtle, but it's so huge that, um, that touch is huge. Dude, even, okay. So this morning I had a client in my home gym. This is all going to come back to the touch. So he messages me yesterday and he's like, hey, can we train earlier? I have a really busy day. I'm like, no problem. Come over at 7 a.m. We'll get it done. And I know he's stressed out. So I schedule a workout where I know we're going to sit PRs all day. Like he did four unassisted chin-ups for the first time in his life this morning. And we just like freaking cook through this workout that is him setting personal records the whole time. And then he goes out to live this, freaking busy day that he was stressed about but he's like leaving so happy that he did these yeah. prs like he did all this and just even a high five on the way out like that impact and all the energy that we exchanged during the session that he is yeah. now like now that maybe i colored his energy a little bit now all the calories he, he spent this morning He's going to be giving calories away to other people. Like he told me he's doing something with his kids. He's meeting up with his grandma. All this stuff is happening. And now he's, he's vibrating at a different level. That's going to change all of them for the better. And the same for you too. And you're, and you're vibrating even higher because of that session that you guys, like, I feel like it's like an amplifier. Like if you can get two beings together and both increase their vibration. It like blasts off as an amplification of like, at like everyone. Yeah. And that's um like Wolfgang, you said a time thing earlier today, which this is too. I mean, time is just a force that stops everything from happening at once. And if you can, if you can access those similar energetic vibrations that happened in the past, in the present, um, then time is just kind of being in the location that you're at because matter can't be in two places at once. But that doesn't mean that, you know, maybe an energetic pattern or an energetic feeling that existed in the past can't reemerge in the present uh, just because time is, is that separation. You were talking deeply about time and that's, um, what was that all about? How, it's funny how everything you just said aligned with my thoughts. Um, but not in the way you might expect. Well, I will talk about the time thing shortly, but first I want to share another story with you. Um, I had to, to, to cut it kind of short. I don't want to like go super in depth into this because it's going to be like a 30 minute story if I go in depth, but I basically was on a call with a friend at one point and we were both experiencing like a lot of sadness and trauma release, uh, from this like deep conversation. And we were like, I was like, what if, what if we just let go? Like, what if we just, just let go of like everything, of the feelings of ever, everything, right? Of everything we're supposed to do, of everything like we're supposed to feel in this moment. What if we just let go and we let go and I just like, I close my eyes and I just like lay there on the chair and I basically like that, like I just, I just let everything happen, exist or whatever, right? Without thinking about it, without judging anything, just completely let myself go. Um, and I like naturally visualize this, like basically galaxy 
like exploding and being born uh just like in front of my eyes i like it was like i was there uh and that was you know fucking incredible moment and it was eyes closed everything is visualization uh and then i got up and it felt like my like my body especially towards my legs it felt like it had roots going into the ground it felt like it like i was a tree uh there were no drugs involved by the way in any of this this was just pure human and water i guess um (laughs) um and i was like i guess that's what they mean when they say being rooted maybe but like i felt like so incredibly rooted and at this point i was standing up when i was feeling that in my legs like i I stand up and i started moving and flowing and stuff and just letting my body move on its own and doing this thing and i i raise my arms and i look at them and i visually see at this point, I don't know if my body, like if my brain released DMT or something, because I know there's a natural amount of it, right, in your body. Um, or what I, I can't tell you what was happening. I can just tell you what my experience was. And I look around my arms and I basically see like vibration like around my arm. It looked a bit like a like wind was like around my arm. I like I could just literally see vibration in the air, like like a like an, kind of like an aura, but it wasn't an aura. It's just like transparent, right? Like all around my arms. And I just sat there in awe and just experienced it. Uh, it felt like it wasn't even like, re- like I wasn't even in reality anymore. I don't know how to explain that. But what's interesting after that powerful experience, and she then she, ex- like she experienced some shit on her end as well. Like across, through, like we're just talking like we are now. Uh, like there wasn't even a camera involved. She experienced her own stuff on her on her end. But what was interesting is that after that experience, for about two weeks, at random intervals, I would have that same feeling like of this like vibration enveloping my arms. I wouldn't see it visually, but I distinctly know that it was the exact same feeling I had when I looked at my arms during that experience. So that energy lingered somehow. For like and it's all because you decided to let go. Yes, it's crazy. That's um, that's really similar to Ram Dass, who you know used to be Richard Albert, who Albert, who was a was a doctor, got involved in LSD research, and he would travel around and find you know some pretty prolific monks, and he would give them LSD, <laughs> and the monks would not react in a way that a typical person would like a typical person would be like, Whoa, I entered this alternate reality. (laughs) Like I felt these vibrations. I saw these patterns in, in that, that totally blew my perception of reality out of, you know, proportion where like the monks were just like, huh, that's, uh, that's pretty Tuesday. That's something, you know, you're definitely connecting to (laughs) another plane, but that's, uh, yeah, that's that's fine. You know, it's, well, I it's think had, that oh, after you go, go chase. I know. I was telling him about like, are you a fan of Ram Dass, Mitchie? Do you ever get into all that jazz? Dude, I, I I'm so glad that you brought that name up because I have yet to truly take a deep dive into Ram Dass. I'm familiar with the ideas of which he had, but nothing deep. Explain. Well, I was just telling Wolfgang that that really reminds me of stories of Ram Dass who got really into LSD research along with uh, Timothy Leary and yeah, he, he uh, left his doctorship to go uh, learn from monks. And he would give these monks and these meditators and these Buddhists and all these different religions, he would give people LSD and see what happens. Yeah. And a lot of times really spiritual people who meditate a lot would not even be affected or they would be affected by it, but they would just observe it. Like they wouldn't have a, a typical human experience. They'd just be like, Oh yeah, that's Tuesday. Yeah, that's that's the most beautiful thing about it is that I think plant medicine that plant medicine is fantastic for beings who are having troubles reaching certain states of um, of the human experience of which Wolfgang experienced. But drugs aren't needed. Um, like plant medicine is not needed to achieve these states, like Wolfgang was saying. And um, and if you learn how to tap into those states of surrender and letting go and really just being in that energy field, like I felt the same thing the other, the other day I went to a yoga practice. It was a few days ago. And in that practice, I just felt a state of surrender and letting go. And then all of a sudden you just feel this 
energy moving throughout your body like your hand like you can feel it moving into your hands and your hands feel like balls of fire and then you can move it around and it's so powerful and like i think that what Wolfgang pointed on was really really powerful like surrender and letting go and then just allowing to feel and be and i love that well everything that you need to you need to let go of your ideas of of the box of perception that you have like as long as you're gripping tightly on your ego and your sense of realism and your sense of reality if you're gripping it you're not going to be able to experience anything outside of it and that can be in a physical or an emotional level but once you let go of it there's there might be this whole realm of possibilities that open up i really wonder what would happen if we just studied this at a species level like if it was like ingrained in our, in our culture just like how have all the other stuff currently in our culture are like, right. And this, really is, this is like standard, like in other animals, right? Like horses, like you can't approach a horse with bad energy or the horse will freak out. You know, like yeah. I, I feel the same way with other beings. There's some people that I naturally feel attracted to that. I want to just get into their energy field, but there's other ones. And babies are really good at this too. Like, like I, like if a baby looks at someone, they either know if they want you around or don't. They'll either scream and cry and ignore you or they'll accept you with love. And, um, and I think we're all very much able to tap into this field of which um, is there. It's just some of us are holding on and are very, and me included, like me included, are very scared to enter that realm to see what is actually there. Yeah. It's uh, it's funny that you mentioned that, that because I was once on the bus in Romania and I was sitting in a chair and like a little bit further away from me, there was like a mother with a kid and uh, with a toddler, I don't know, a small baby uh, in, a, in a thingy trolley. Yeah, what is it called? A stroller? Yeah, a stroller. That's and this, this kid just, <laughs> this kid just cried constantly and it was like somewhat and it was super hot and everybody was sweating and everybody was like uncomfortable and the kid was screaming too so it's like and i looked at me and i was like the mother was like really stressed out and i just took a moment to bring myself into stillness and just this kid could not see me they were like just screaming that they like they had no direct eye, eye contact with me or anything I just like visualized or if you'd like to call it imagined, it's the same thing <laughs> for other, you know, if people so are like, what the fuck is visualized? <laughs> so I, I just visualize like these energy, like waves just going towards this, this crying child. And I really focused on that. And I just, it's like, kind of like sending my, my calm stillness energy and just being like, it's okay. It's okay. The kids stop crying. Dude, you should be a babysitter. <laughs> no, I shouldn't. I, that sounds like hell. <laughs> no, no, I totally vibe with that, Chase. I'm sorry for, for speaking so much here. But, um, oh, dude, I was doing a lot of work, <laughs> a lot of deep work. I was studying Caesar Milan. <laughs> dude, he, dude, he's the dog whisperer. Um, <laughs> and, so, and so Caesar would always talk about, uh, like sending out this aura of calm, confident, love, joy, and how the dogs can feel if you're exuding this calm, confident, love, joy, and how like when you're walking a dog, you need to em- like embrace being calm, confident, love, and joy. And then I was like, man, why not just say that to yourself when you're around humans too? Like humans yeah. can feel that calm, confident, love, joy. And um, yeah, yeah just getting woo woo but yeah that's that's just another part of the deep work that i've tried to do is also studying the dog whispers as well <laughs> but but what they're saying is like totally true as well well yeah i mean the reason that like like i don't know you you know certain people who come over and they get along i love having a dog because certain people come over and they just vibe with the dog and then certain people will never vibe with the dog like certain people mabel will never let in because even though they're like i'm like okay here give her some treats do all this like here's what you got to say here's how you do it they'll go through the motions but they'll be carrying this standoffish energy like they're always being too skittish whereas someone could come in 
and do entirely the wrong thing, not follow the script of Mabel at all, but they could be coming in with calmness and confidence. And Mabel will just, you know, she'll like be a little started, but then she's like, oh, I'm picking up your vibe. You're chill. And then the, the person that there's someone in the room, like if we have a party, someone's always like, you can tell that they're always like, where's Mabel? Like, I'm not a dog person. Where's the dog? Like, I'm a little rigid. And Mabel the whole time, she's like, what the hell's wrong with that person? <laughs> Dude, dogs are great. Yeah. It's as if there's like something on this planet that connects us all and maybe even beyond. But right now we're only on this planet so we can figure it out while we're here. Dude, yeah. every hundred years, new people, every hundred years, same calories, all new people. Yeah. That's it. I mean, we're all operating on the same materials. We have the same Lego set. It's the same energy. It's the same molecules. My molecules are other people's molecules. We're all exchanging these molecules. What all one? That's true. I think yeah. it's uh, Leo from actualize.org. It's like some spiritual dude on YouTube that I watch every once in a while. Uh, I haven't watched him in a while. I wonder why. I wonder if he hasn't uploaded or if like... It just hasn't showed up in my sub box because YouTube sucks. Anyway, I heard them talk about uh, the concept of like, just, uh, and this is taking it back a bit. This is the concept of like, yeah, everything you perceive is basically a lie. You are, you are the form that you are and you have the perception of reality that you have because of your, that's what you believe, basically. And that, that feels connected to that whole stuff we talked about. Yeah, I mean, goes into like, some, some stuff. He even filmed himself like doing some sort of drug at some point and just basically is just like filmed himself, like has like three hour videos of him just tripping out and just talking about whatever the fuck is going on in that time. Yeah, I mean, there's something about like drugs that put you in a different state that people like, like people like knowing that they have access to other states. Like you might use plant medicines to dissolve the boundaries between you and the rest of the world to experience oneness. You might use alcohol to numb yourself to where you can be a little more social. You might use Advil because you have pain in your back and you want to get rid of that pain. All of these drugs, caffeine, because you want to feel a little more up than you are. But most of these effects of drugs, and there are some drugs that are like, you know, clinically administered that, you know, this isn't all drugs, but a lot of the the self-medication over the counter shit that we do, we could achieve these states by working on ourselves. We could yep. feel the oneness by meditating. We could feel more socially powerful by getting into social situations. We could fix our back pain by doing a little bit more yoga and stretching. We could feel better in the morning by cutting out caffeine and finding alternative ways to boost our energy. Like all of this, the drugs are often just a quick way. And, and there's a time and a place for them. Like you're, you know, you're not talking to like an anti, you know, don't never put anything in your system guy, but like, if you do longer work, if you use the damn slow cooker, you might be able to get in that state for a while. You might become the monk who takes the LSD and says, oh, yeah, that's Tuesday. I don't need that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, everything I've experienced, I've experienced without any of those things. I like, I don't drink coffee. I don't like feeling drunk from alcohol. So I don't drink or like smoke or any of, any of that uh, just because eh, I don't care about it. I'm not like anti it. I'm just eh, sure. Whatever. Um, music is another one of those. And I have a little story about that. But first, I have a, a question slash concept to pose. Isn't it funny how we like we live in this world right now where it's like, take the pill, take the, the quick fix, take all like, right, the, the microwave. And this feels like it goes against everything that we are when you take a deep dive. Like, it feels like it's literally against everything that humans are. Uh, when you when you bring this like microwave thing into it, mm-hmm. and it sometimes I look around and see everything that's going on, and it, I f- it feels like it's God. It feels like something that knows us really well is just fucking with us. <laughs> Do you guys ever get that feeling? Like it's it's so meticulously anti-human sometimes the whole system that we live in. That with the, the systems we devised around us, capitalism, the money system, all of this, communism in other parts of the world, just everything we live in, the economy, the, all of this, it feels so anti-human that it's like, 
man, sometimes it feels like someone who just knows showed up and was like, man, fuck humans. <laughs> I mean, whatever that could be, I don't know. Like, eh. well, that's like the idea that the like, right, the energy, like the 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 state of energy has a personality, and that personality has a sick sense of humor where it's like <laughs> you know this is what you want i'll give it to you it's almost a, a a sense of humor like once you get less attached to your human condition like you might be able to realize it but i don't know you you read terrence mckenna and he talks about doing these crazy psychedelic trips and just talking to the you know the dmt gods and they they all have like a weird <laughs> sense of humor about humanity so like it is in a Man, way we gotta go do some ayahuasca <laughs> yeah, let's go on a retreat. Let's do the the live out, leave feeling better ayahuasca retreat. <laughs> just it's just two hours of puking. Yeah. <laughs> It'd be great on mic, man, on the on the microphone. Oh, um, yeah, dude. but no, it's funny. The universe has a has a horrible sense of humor that reveals itself. Um, Mitch, you look like you want to say something. Oh, that was such a beautiful way to put it, huh? Like that that <laughs> that uh. That it's almost like just a big old joke in a way that society is set up to where it's so unhuman. Eating foods, like being surrounded by foods that are so far Everything. not from this planet Earth, you know? <laughs> like, <laughs> um, but yeah, I, but I want to kind of bring it all the way back around to what Chase was saying. Like, I, I think it's really fascinating that a lot of the literature that you'll read dating back centuries, there's always been this kind of curiosity and maybe even obsession with altering your state of mind, right? Like whether that's through marijuana, whether that's through caffeine, whether that's through like anything um, that comes from the earth. And I think it's really interesting that those times have like those times when the beings have altered their state of mind have been like some, like some of the most uh, significant breakthroughs in our human existence, you know what I mean? Like whether that was learning how to um, create fire, like through all of that, I'm not saying that everyone was um, all hopped up on whatever, but it puts us in a state of mind that I believe if you can understand reality, not, not even understand reality, but un kind of understand yourself without being altered and then go into a state of being altered, you can really achieve some things. But if you're always in an altered state, whether you're going from caffeine to alcohol, to alcohol, to caffeine, to caffeine, to something, I'm not quite sure there's a benefit to always being altered, but I think there, it, it basically what I want to say is like, I think it's really interesting that humans have always been um, attracted to changing their like like altering their state of mind but you know what i mean absolutely i mean yeah. humans like like what an amazing thing then truly like i'm not using the word amazing lightly that you can ingest something and it will change the way that you perceive reality i mean that kind of <laughs> reinforces the thing that reality is your that your head is a radio antenna that your five senses are picking up vibrations and that you can ingest something that modifies the way these vibrations happen, that might even modify the, the chemical balance in your head that decides the emotions that dictate your personality. Like, like you might take something and your personality will change. Like, like in the same way that you can use psychedelics to see what's possible, you can use painkillers to temporarily help you push through pain that you need to push through in order to rehabilitate a muscle or something like hmm. like and it's like almost unfathomable that you could achieve these other states without the help and granted given to your own devices you could if you were if you were determined enough but with the assistance of something that helps you to dissolve boundaries and see what's possible like it's kind of like the five minute mile like people could not run a five minute mile until they knew it was possible or what is it the four minute mile i don't or yeah, yeah, four minutes. Yeah, the yeah. four minute mile. Like people could not do it. And then once they knew it was possible, yeah, tons of people were doing it. In the same way, mm -hmm. like not knowing that you have access to breaking out of the boundaries that you currently have, once you have a little bit of assistance, you see it's there. And it's like, how do I get there without the substance? Let me go. Um, but using it as a crutch that eventually teaches you how to walk on one leg or walk on both legs is a lot better than using it as a crutch 
that you rely on too much and then end up needing a wheelchair. Absolutely. Yeah. There's, there's a balance of everything that needs to be taken into account for just like caffeine too. Like you can get through a big workout. If you have a little bit of caffeine before it can really uh, lower your rate of perceived exertion, you can lift more, but if you're relying on it for every workout, then you're probably going to be screwed when you don't have it. Oh yeah. Or if you're just relying on it for a living. <laughs> that too. There's a reason. There's a reason a lot of people just go like, "Oh, I'm fucking." I hate those memes. I mean, then it was like, it just shows the state of the coffee industry, I guess, where people are like, "Don't talk to me until I had my morning coffee." As it's like, wow, regular use sucks that much. Holy shit! But the, wow, there, there is a, <laughs> but there's a giant cultural. Yeah. propaganda system that For wants sure. people to be reliant on chemicals that change their rest like that change their state constantly like you go into any funny t-shirt store and half of the t-shirts are like let me get my coffee half the t-shirts are like it's five o'clock somewhere half the t-shirts are Mondays. Like, yeah <laughs> yeah there's all these t-shirts that are telling you that you're gonna be okay once you have this thing and that more of this thing is better. And it's not just t-shirts. People are sharing it everywhere. It's everywhere on social media. It's everywhere in the news. It's everywhere in advertisements that you're not complete until you have this substance. And this is the slippery slope of like a substance might be able to help you see that other things are possible, but I, you can't make it the crutch that cripples you. You got to make it the crutch that empowers you to walk on both legs and develop these skills without needing anything. Right, what's the yeah. saying, Chase? What's your saying about using it or it will use you? Oh, yeah. And what, what was it? Uh, oh, you told me that either you use it or it uses you, meaning like you choose when you're going to use the caffeine and you're going to use the hell out of it rather mm-hmm. than like, I, I need the caffeine and it's using you. Well, yeah, I that's why. I've, yeah. Oh, after you. Okay. I think I've heard that as like a Romanian saying growing up. Interesting. Continue. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's, that's why I like for a period of time, I, it's funny you mentioned the caffeine thing, man. I was taking pre-workout before every workout, like 350 <laughs> milligrams of caffeine, just zoning. And then you hit a certain point where you're like, Oh, if I don't have this caffeine, it's a problem. Like ideally, and this is a metaphor for, this is every drug, <laughs> not every drug. Yeah. Cause unless you have a condition where you need to take drugs every day, I need to throw so many disclaimers out there, but um, this is so many of the optional drugs, right? You're taking them as as an enhancer but once it becomes the standard you're in trouble like once you need 300 milligrams of caffeine to work out you got a problem where like now i just drink decaf coffee and whenever i have a hard workout i'm like let me use caffeine and get the benefits because now is the time but every day is not the time my freaking 9 a.m meeting for work is not the time that i need caffeine (laughs) <laughs> yeah it's a it's an enhancer not an addict addictor i guess yeah it's just you you can't be relying on it. it's not an essential part of the equation and like yeah. this is this is anything i mean this is anything that you think is essential even your even your uh you know it could be it could be scrolling facebook in the morning or it could even be your morning jog and cold shower like yeah that might enhance your day but that's not essential and this is that that freaking perfect routine stuff that i need to work on it's like you know so many mornings it's like i got to do my mobility it's like that's an enhancer but it's not essential nothing is essential and this is letting go that you talked about earlier Wolfgang. let go of all this shit that you think is essential all these boxes that you're putting yourself in yeah all these substances that you rely on i've i've been trapped in that uh, I'm not good enough until I with meditation. Mm. It, it got so bad. It was it was like a period of a few months. Uh, and it didn't help that I was taking lion's mane at the time because that just made that become worse faster. For mm. those for those that don't know lion's mane, I think um, basically it's makes a cognitive mushroom, right? Yeah, it makes your neural pathways form even faster. So if you want to like learn or develop a new habit that is actually healthy for you, taking lion's mane will help you do that faster and more efficiently. Um, so I was taking that at the time just because I was exploring uh, uh, it. It's it's not uh, it's not a drug. Just for if people are wondering, it's just a fucking mushroom. Um, yeah, it's not a psychoactive mushroom. Yeah, yeah exactly. it's not. Yeah, it's not. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so like that that reinforced that even faster. But 
I was in the state like for a few months of like, I need to listen to this specific meditation before I leave the house when I'm going to be like weird. It's like, man, that, no, that's stupid. Thankfully, I realized that fast. But like, I see that in people all around me. Some, some people are like, before I leave the house, I got to put on the music, get in the groove, get in the mood to go out. I got to get the clothes, find the clothes, prepare the clothes, do this, do that. And they'd like take like an hour to prepare to just, just to leave the house. And if you just, if you're like, hey, just leave the way you are, like that terrifies them, right? Oh, what if people see the real me? It's like, fuck, man. Yeah. <laughs> the real you is the best thing you have. And to, to take it back to the whole marketing thing, where you see like all the ads and everything are like, you're not good enough until you get this thing that we sell you. Um, quick little tip for life in general, having problems with confidence or stuff like that. Try to minimize the num- the level of marketing that you see throughout your life. Uh, if you use a PC a lot, just fucking install your block origin. Just do it. You're, you're, it, you're doing it for your mental health. Uh, you'll see less ads and that does feel less shit all the time. Uh, or actually, I'm not even going to tell you how you're going to feel. Fucking try it yourself. Um, <laughs> try wearing clothes that don't have brands on them, right? So every time you open your fucking closet, you see all these brands and that triggers shit in your brain that is reinforced by those ads that you've been seeing obviously on the street you can't do anything about it you're gonna see fucking ads everywhere depending on where you leave uh leave live but on the street man on the street realize how beautiful buildings and flowers are yeah and that helps you're still going to have intrusive ads a hundred percent you're gonna be looking like oh this part of the building is so nice such architecture how it feels to chew five gum Oh, that's the rest of the building is so cool. Like just big ass poster on the building, right? Like it's, they are intrusive and they're disgusting. And since no, we're not working towards dismantling this bullshit because people aren't aware of it yet. uh, Just do your best to try to not ingest as much of ads and just see how your life changes. Yeah. I like that. That's something that traveling taught me. Like I was so reliant on protein powder in the morning uh putting in my hair gel like shaving and stuff and then when you go into another country or you're hiking around and you don't have protein powder or you don't have a lot of these things that you're used to mm-hmm. um or even like face lotion sometimes like there's times you run out and you're not around anywhere um man it throws you into a world of uncomfortability because you've been so reliant on these things. And then when you can really like show who you are without having to use those things like makeup or whatever those like that is, then you really whatever like, the gain routine the confidence is, yeah. in yourself. Yeah, whatever the routine is, then that's where the true confidence comes from because you realize that you're exuding your personality and that the physical is just the physical. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that took me a like damn, like I still struggle with that, but that was really hard for me to face when I was like traveling through Bali and stuff. And I had just come out of the whole corporate life of making over a hundred thousand dollars a year and getting $60 haircuts every week. And like, man, like having my hair grow out and stuff, I was so uncomfortable because I, I was all physical. Like I could only show people who I was through what I wore on my body and the, my haircut and everything. But I realized that's so surface level, right? Yeah. I mean, that's the business world in general. It's all surface level bullshit. And all the industries that I've been in, uh, that's just mini rant there, I guess. Um, it's Isn't it funny how people will be like, oh, man, I love being in nature, right? But And yes, when you are in nature, it's fucking awesome. But have you ever noticed how when you're in a train going somewhere, and stuff like that and it's nice and quiet and there isn't like now no bullshit tv or something around you how the moment you fucking left the city just the whole vibe changes because there's not a million things trying to fucking take take the time and space of your brain power yeah but but that the thing is is that that uh becomes normal for a lot of people like yeah. like always having shit to fixate on is a lot of people's normal so you'll also notice that you know, I think one of the most peaceful things in the world is to like take off in an airplane and like, you know, for a minute, nobody's using technology and you're just like, oh my God, yeah. we're all in this box floating above reality. Like, so oh, cool. you know, we're all floating above the ground yeah. that we used to be on. But then once we're all alone, 
once you can use your cell phones, everyone's like, let's get distracted, baby. Like, I'm like, look at these clouds, guys. Isn't these clouds beautiful? And everyone's like, look at this advertisement. <laughs> if, listen, if you're if you're not next to the window, I get it. You know, yeah, if you're next yeah. to the window. Why are you wasting space for other people that would actually look at the clouds? <laughs> oh, no, dude, I'm talking to myself, too. Like, like, granted, I, I say a lot because I'm just saying it to chase like. Dude, yeah. like you know, you you take off, or you know, you're you're just like on a casual stroll, and like you just want distraction. Like it's so hard to just be in nothingness. Yeah. Man's ability, yeah. like man's inability to sit quietly in a room, is the mm. root of all problems. <laughs> to like Marcus Aurelius, huh? Yeah, there you go. Marcus and Aurelius it's all said that centuries ago. You know, like that quote right there, Chase. It could be like. Oh, okay. Like that quote was probably from this century, like <laughs> a man's inability to sit in a quiet room because there's technology and stuff. It's like, no, Marcus Aurelius said that thousands of years ago, you know, yeah. like this has always been a, um, uh, a, a difficult subject for humans is to be present and in the present moment. Yeah. And it's just getting even more now with technology and stuff. But I love that. I love that challenge about the, societal like norm of which we live in now like like i know we talked about it abundance of everything you know like i love that challenge of not trusting your instincts of getting uncomfortable of being present and putting stuff down man it's such a beautiful freaking game mitchy i love that you left your cell phone at a client's house and are just <laughs> going about your life dude that's great yeah man well i can't say that too much because i still have my ipad so i can okay yeah so i can text off that but yeah it is weird like when i was driving in the car from like to and from the gym this morning like i didn't have my phone with me you know like and so i was like this is really uncomfortable and i was trying to pinpoint it as like oh did i have bad sleep last night like what happened then i was like oh my phone's not here and i'm not distracted like i'm having to sit with like just my thoughts right now while I'm driving. And I haven't been so used to that in a while because I'll throw on some music or, or even if I don't put on music, I'll have my phone with me, which gives me comfort when the phone's not even like, there, then that's when I get the discomfort. But yeah, like you, you realize that you can survive without it. Yeah. All it takes is a couple of days of just putting that away. Um, man, it's, it's funny because the two times what I really could say seen the world for what it really is like just clarity planetary planet clarity is on the flight when you take off before the the you know that that moment of just peacefulness before the airplane goes so anyway we have snacks and clocks and watches and it's like a fucking gypsy on a bus uh except to a corporate level uh, just corporate trying to sell gypsy. you a million, yeah. Just trying to sell you everything under the fucking sun while you're just enjoying clouds. Um, yeah, get drunk. I'm, yeah, they're like, hey, always, we got uh, some booze, we got some coffee. What do you need? Yeah. <laughs> God, I fucking display. Hey, perfume. You want to buy a gift for someone? No, fuck off. It's like a, it's like a floating casino. This is, is why, guys, we need to get a private jet just so we can experience actual peaceful flight. Mm. We need to, we need to know what this is like. Like we need, to, we need to figure out how to get ourselves a private jet. Just saying. Um, and the Dude, second, I'm not quite was... sure it would be peaceful. I think I'd be partying. Yeah, yeah. Hey, be... <laughs> but it would be out of your own volition, drunk and high at the same time, drinking. It would, there wouldn't be anybody trying to sell you nothing. There it is, Chase. There it is. <laughs> Nobody trying to sell you nothing. Not nothing at all. That's just, true. Just you on the plane and whatever else you want to do in it. Um. Anyway, so yeah, that's a that's a put that on the list of objectives. Uh, and then the other one was the first few weeks of COVID when nothing existed in the world other than delivery trucks. Dude. Mm -hmm. <sighs> that's all I got to say about that. Just exhale, deep exhale. I I was like I was sitting outside in my garden and just like holy fuck this is what the world is really is like just peace nothing nothing at all just peace just that's it just you and the planet nobody around nobody and i wish more people would really internalize that feeling that understanding of what really is 
and well supposedly given everything we talked at least that is my understanding of it <laughs> who knows what the real is um yeah. but man i wish that was like something we strived for or towards as a species like that just like man yeah just peace i mean and and there it is is that that the the ecstasy the nirvana the joy the peace the everything that you that you think you want so much that you think you need external tools to get it's always it's there. natural it's, it's natural there. Yeah, yeah it is it's it's packed up and you know the in love experience is just it's literally yeah. people say like how is no how are, how are we missing the point like you're you're being you're in love you are in you're in the love you are in the love you're in it be in it like just realize that you are in it and it's just a condition that you can go be in go be in it go be in love yeah yeah and the more you're in it then the more you can really like love and laugh at when you're not in it you know what i mean like it's funny like i was brushing my teeth yesterday and i was not being mindful at all of it and i was like wow this is awesome because this is how I used to always brush my teeth of like just not being aware of what I was doing. I was thinking about other things and not even realizing that I was thinking about other things. And I was like, wow, this is a pretty, it's actually a pretty fun state to be in. It's like not mindful. But then I was like, okay, I like being mindful a little bit more. And it's just like, <laughs> it's like Eckhart Tolle says, like the moment you realize that you're no longer present is the moment that you're present. And yeah, yeah, that's it. That that awareness is the first step. Yeah, Stephanie, uh, my friend Stephanie Rick says said something at one point, which I really love, which is relaxation is not something you must achieve. And relaxation, relaxation is your natural state. You just have to remember you're relaxed. Yeah, it's yeah. always like it's revealed. I mean, it's yeah. it's there. You just have to uncover it. You know, like you don't have to find something. It's always that. Yeah, yeah. It's like like people are like trying to discover something. And it's more of an uncovering. It's like, let's let's pull this stuff away so we can get to it. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's funny. We have people that we live in a world where people feel like shit running through all these systems that we've put in place. Um, the constantly distracted running towards the thing that is already around them all along. <laughs> It's fucking depressing, but also really impressive. Yeah, but it's also so beautiful to yeah. to realize it. It's it's simultaneously the most amazing and demoralizing concept that everything you need is within you, because that's a lot. It's it, it makes it one. It makes it so easy, but two. It makes it so hard. Yeah, you realize how difficult it is to be there. Yeah, yeah. I, th I think the biggest step that is to just realize a lot of your thoughts just aren't on your own. If you feel, like I said, unconfident or if you feel you're not good enough. And most of these things were just seeds planted by the system. You just, it's not fake until you make it. Like I say, it's be real until you remember. You already have all the tools. You just, it, it's so easy to identify with the thoughts that are planted in our head every day, every waking moment of you're not good enough, but you are good enough. And all it takes is a little bit of awareness, I guess. And believing that, like really believing that because one of my one of the most disheartening things I experience in this world is when I tell someone how fucking incredible they are and they just don't believe it. They're so far out on like on on the thoughts of of lack that yeah. they don't realize their own abundance. And that's always like so saddening to me. Uh, but it's beautiful that they still have it, even if they're not aware of it, they do have it. And maybe they won't see it for the rest of their lives, but they do have it. And that's at a grand, almost bit my tongue there. At a grand scale, uh, humanity, I guess. Like Mitch said, I think Mitch, you wanted to say something too. Oh, I love you and you guys, Todd. <laughs> hey, we got a we got seven and a half minutes left. I think we're gonna be able to put a bow on this, right? Like we can. Yeah, sounds good. Yeah, I think so. Yo, Wolfgang, I think uh, that the belief is huge. I mean. A lot of, like I love to have these conversations with people um, that just go really deep and explore what it means to be human. And let me just say real quick, I, I last night with my wife, like I'm sitting down, dude, we talk like this almost every night. I'm like, do you realize that's how so cool. it's, it's amazing. Like 
because she's listening to the podcast too and like she's Hello. like yeah yeah oh yeah yeah she's she's great but like this is i'm like literally like we sit down every night and i'm like if anybody could hear what we're talking about they'd be like what the hell like like i'm like we are so outside of the realm of just normal yeah. um <laughs> but it's great and i and and like i'm so happy to have this experience with you guys as well where we can just say whatever the hell we want and we record yeah. it you know, yeah. <laughs> I'll just have to secretly start recording our conversations. Uh, but anyway, um, the belief is huge, man. The belief, because like we'll talk to other people about these. We'll talk to other people about these heady ideas. And like, I'll be like, oh, yeah, like calories every hundred years, all new people, same calories. Like, doesn't that doesn't that rattle your bones? And people be like, oh, yeah, it does. But like, I'm like, you're not really hearing this. Like, you're not yeah. like you're not, <laughs> it doesn't like, hit. You know, there's people that are like, oh, yeah, I'm, you know, I don't really believe in a higher power, but I'm spiritual. You know, I believe in an energy and I believe in a, a power that I believe like in, in a bigger power. And that's yeah. I'm like, but probably follow some hashtags on Instagram and that's about it. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, dude, but hashtag fate. Yeah. Like hashtag woke. <laughs> Killing blessed. Like hashtag woke. I'm like, like, hey, are, like, do you realize what you're saying? Can you sit back and like actually realize like you think there's you think there's another game happening here behind the business, behind the job, behind the personality, behind the ego. Like you really think there's something pulling the strings here. And they're like, well, if you want to get weird and I'm like, yeah, I want to get weird. Yeah. <laughs> that's what the real shit happens. So and thank you guys just, for getting weird. That's it. Yeah. yeah thank man. you. This, if you don't call this the, the weird episode TM, I'm going to be very disappointed. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't know what and, this is called. <laughs> that, there you go. I just gave you the title. There you just go. The weird episode the TM. Um, <laughs> And I don't want to, because I know how this can sound preachy to some people, but we don't mean this as in, haha, you're fucking stupid and unaware. No, it's, hey, you have that. Take a moment to realize that you yourself have it. You're fucking awesome. <laughs> We're not better than you. We're just informing you that we saw some shit and we also see the shit in you and the, that shit is awesome. Yeah, and we also experience the same shit as well. Like throughout yeah. this podcast, even like there's been multiple times where in my head I've I've come from a place of not fully loving myself, where I'm like, oh, am I talking too much right now? Are people gonna understand <laughs> what I'm saying? Is this this? And I experience this all day. Um, like it's not like it's gone, but it's like, hey, I I recognize that it's there, and I can coach myself with self love through it rather than sitting the whole time on the podcast saying yeah oh my gosh i'm so scared of what i'm going to say next you know like because i wonder what people are going to think of me like i recognize that those thoughts are there but fuck i just love myself and i, I gotta say whatever comes up dude yeah, absolutely just let it out treating myself more like i treat mabel is the best in a way that <laughs> in a way that like i'll get so fixed up on shit like like the worst thing that mabel can do is like pee on the floor which she hasn't done in a really long time she has not done that in years good job like, label yeah she's great but when she did it in the past when she was learning she would pee on the floor and then like walk over to me like oh my god i did the worst thing ever you're gonna be so you know like her tail between her legs she's like oh my god i did the worst thing i could possibly <laughs> do and i'm like yo calm down like even if you're screwing up like you're a good dog you know <laughs> you mean well it was an accident like yeah we're gonna work on that and we're not gonna do it again but like you're fine and it's like all your little human issues for the most part, unless you're some sort of like really pulling some political strings here, like, Hey, like, you're, what are you fixed up about? Are you just peeing in the corner? And is it going to be better? Because like, like, let's just, let's just grow from this and let's not get so worked up. Yeah. 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 Plant the tree where you peed. Yeah. You're going to have a tree house. Go water that seed. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, this is great. Hey, all right. I have an idea. Let's sign off of the podcast. And in the last minute, let's record an intro that will go at the beginning to tell people what they're about to hear. Do you, are you guys okay. into that? Sounds great. Okay. We're going to let them know. We're not going to hit them with the left hook. All right, let's try. And if it sucks, if it sucks, then this is the outro and people are going to hear <laughs> it and they're going to be like, okay, it totally sucked. So here's, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to say thank you guys for listening to Leave Feeling Better. If you got any value out of this ridiculous woo-woo discussion, which I think you if you heard it, you should, um, yeah. then you can come talk to us on the Patreon for just $5 a month. And next or week, email we'll, us for free. 
or email us for free or just share this with a friend for free any any means and next week we'll probably talk about values because our lovely patron hannah Ahmad suggested it absolutely look forward to it beautiful Thank you.